So I'm going to show you what happened when I let the floating plants in this tank get away from me. Um, it's kind of proof that, you know, in the wild, these plants can really become invasive if they're uh, introduced into places they shouldn't be, local ponds, streams, whatever. It's important that we do not do that. I'm going to show you what I did to allow light to get back into this tank. The, the, the dwarf water lettuce on this tank was probably three inches thick or more. It was shading out the light. It was pushing itself down into the, uh, in further into the tank. So let me show you what I did. I'm getting tired of floating plants, especially when the duckweed gets in there. This is dwarf water lettuce and some salvinia, and there's a big old wad of duckweed. And it's just gotten so thick that it's pushing itself underwater, and there's no real light in this tank. This is my 75 gallon. I had a bunch of uh, little dwarf water lettuce. It's really small. I think it stayed small because the flow in here from this hang on back filter. But then I looked at it this morning and it's full of duckweed. And I don't know where that came from. Obviously it came in with the dwarf water lettuce. There's a little piece of duckweed there. So I will get that out of there. And I think what I'm gonna do is both of these 29 gallon tanks have salvinia and dwarf water lettuce and duckweed. So I'm just, I'm done. I am just done with the with the floating plants. In this 40, I pulled out, I had a whole bunch of this uh, little stuff back here. It's called Rickia water spangles. And it covered the surface of this tank. And I left a few pieces behind. And there was duckweed in here. And there's some nice pieces of the dwarf water lettuce. And I'm, I don't know if I wanna keep it in here. There's enough cover with the, all this jungle valve that's grown up over the top of the tank. It's all planted in the back of the tank. And, uh, I'm going to pull some of it out. I can see it's big pieces are working its way forward. I planted that jungle valve a year ago, April 2023, and it's uh, it took a long time to get established, and now it's just going ape shit. Can I say that? I did. Too late. So I mean, it's even pushing itself up out of the water. But I tell you what, the little uh, swordtail fry, I love it. It's great cover for them. Keeps their olders from uh, feasting on them. So anyway, I think this is the end of my floating plants. I've been trying to sell some of these on uh, eBay. Nobody seems to want uh, Rickia water spangles. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. There it is. Nobody wants uh, the duckweed, or not the duckweed, nobody wants that. Well, I guess people do. Uh, the uh, dwarf water lettuce, the salvinia, same. Let's go back over here again. Um, in fact, I'd seen other, you know, like, uh, Shopify stores, other stores, fish, you know, fish related stores with, uh, disclaimers on the dwarf water lettuce, make sure it's allowed in your state. Cause apparently there's half a dozen states or more that their local departments of agriculture or the state departments of agriculture do not want it in because why they are an invasive plant species. And look at this, no kidding. And I was watching, I think it was Gem Aquatics from Australia the other day, and she's out at this little pond somewhere in the outback, probably not too far, and it's covered with a variety of salvinia, completely covered with an invasive species. And it pushes out all the native species. So this is all gonna go in this bucket. And this bucket is got about that much in it from that tank that I took out. And uh, it's all just gonna go in the garden. It's all just going to be compost. So use it, right? Don't just pitch it. Use it when you get tired of it. Uh, I've seen a lot of people, you know, net their floating plants out to keep them thinned out. And they throw them away. Well, I guess if you're in an apartment, that's one thing. But if you're in a house, you know, if you can do it, if you've got a yard, throw the stuff under the, under the plants. Just compost it. It's full of nutrients. So one of the things I noticed, having a thick layer of the dwarf water lettuce, is the amount of mulm that gets created. And when I took uh, the water lettuce out, you'll see, you could see um, all, all the little bits of, of roots 
that it sheds uh, that were floating in the water here. And you can also see um, all that, that, that fish stirred up. And that's all from the, the breakdown, the drop off and the breakdown of the roots of that water lettuce. So my big issue, you can see it over here too, is that I simply was not managing it correctly. I was allowing the surface plants to just get too thick. So that would be a suggestion if you're gonna keep surface plants to make sure you keep them thinned out because otherwise uh, they take over. I was watching somebody else's video this morning also and they were talking about all the surface plants that they had and they took out and they have a huge thick layer of this stuff at the bottom of their tank that they're trying to clean up. So that's where this comes from. I was thinking it came from, you know, breaking off the wood, whatever. I've got a couple uh, auto sinkless in here. There's one, but it is, I'm betting money that it's uh, all the, uh, the drop off and breakdown of the roots from that uh, dwarf water lettuce. And, and you can see little elongated pieces of it floating around in here. Uh, that's why I'm saying that. So anyway, that's just sort of my two cents on the whole subject. And as always, thanks for looking.